So for those who saw Shonda Earl's The Return, we are doing, I'm doing our own version of that right now with Lucy right here. So Lucy's competing. I'll let you introduce her. What are you competing for, Lucy? A competition. We're competing for a competition that's in seven weeks. And, we have, and we're doing quote unquote, how would you say, ninja? Ninja training. Ninja training, all right? So there's a couple of real important things. Grip strength, core control, and mastering her body weight, okay? Usually, it's funny, usually I'm on the other side of the camera. <laughs> now with the roles are reversed, right? Now the roles are reversed. So we're gonna take you on documenting this journey over the next seven weeks. So I think it's invaluable to kind of, to document this journey, right? So now I'm running loose through what we got because I wanna get your opinion on this as well, right? Because this is like a two-way process. pull-ups and we will do eccentrics or iso holds but we have a very limited time frame so with all this stuff so things have to get more advanced more quickly but luckily Lucy already has a good foundation of strength Thumbless is usually harder for most people. That's ex gymnastics, I'm used to doing like that. Right. Nice, that's what you're doing. Like what? Over 75 plus seconds. I have to get three minutes. That's baseline. For what? For the hang. Get hang. Three minute dead hang. Nice. Wait, okay. So, what if you don't have. So, they, what, they test you beforehand? No, you know. Um, in our auditions, they said on average, when you're on the floor, it's yeah. three minute dead hang. So if you can get that, you should be able to cruise through the floor. Oh, okay. So that's just a number they created? Yep. yep. Based on the, what they see? Yep. Alright. So now we've now we got a tangible number. Three minute dead hang based on the competition, uh, kind of, what they found is to be <laughs> the people who perform the best have a three minute dead hang. Right there, we got like 90 seconds, but we were doing one arm as well. So you can probably get two minutes if it was just two hands. Like you get one minute fifty. It's a lot. Yeah. Once we start adding weight and doing like weighted works and stuff like that, yeah. I want you to now do um, some soft tissue work in your hand. So we're gonna do a lot of grip work. So her hands are gonna get fatigued. Her forearms are gonna get hooked. So we want to kind of break up the adhesions in the fascia and really lengthen that tight tissue when the, all, all these intricate muscles in your hand, which get can get quite tight, especially if you're doing a lot of a lot of grip work. I'm not gonna be like a like a form Nazi with her because she's gonna be in positions where she has 
has to. Alright, starting now. She has to get herself up in ways that aren't going to be pretty, right? So, usually I always go as many reps as possible with perfect form, but this, we might have some more leniency. I started timing after a chin up, so technically that's probably three minutes. So. It's a good pain though. Okay, so push up. Put your elbows on a 45 degree angle, so your scapula. So instead of, pull your scapulas, pull your elbows out here, your scapula doesn't move through its full range of motion properly. Bring it on a 45 degree angle, and you can get proper upward rotation. Because we do want your shoulders to be healthy as well as strong. Yep. So usually I will stop when I start seeing the back sway. That's usually my cue to like, when the perfect form is gone. But I want to push her as well, and how, my leniency for that will be more than usual. Press through the dumbbells. Low all the way down. Hold. Isometric hold in this bottom position, okay? Hold. You're going to stay tight. Good pull. Pull. That's, what was that, 20 something? 22. No, 23, but with the 23rd right. hold. So, I mean, we're good to start adding weight. Incrementally, I just I'm getting you training in more of a sh strength and power kind of uh, rep range. Yeah. So lower reps, high weight. Yeah. And just to be clear, like none of this is set in stone. None of it. Like I, this is all can change depending on like oh her wrist. Oh, we're no longer doing handstand push-ups. So that's boom. That's crossed out. All right. Push-up. She can already do over 20 with pretty good form. Um, so that's all right. We're ready to start adding weight and progressing the movement. And that applies to everything we do. I wish so god I wish it wasn't so goddamn loud in here. <laughs> yeah. I do wish that. <laughs> Tell us to clap it down. Break, break down the week, the average week that you'll be you'll be doing. So I usually do weights from Monday to Thursday. Friday I'll usually do a 5k run. Saturday I'll do weights. Sunday I'll do weights. Wait, so wait, so the active rest day was Friday? It's my pizza mm -hmm. night. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the pizza warrior? Yes. I, I hear you're the pizza warrior. What is that? That's because I love pizza. What do you do? I want to talk about the 5k runs. Why do you do the 5k? Because it helps me, it, because I enjoy it. I just enjoy it. It just helps me zone out. It's something different to wait. You can get outside, whack in the music. Like meditation. <laughs> so it's not really it's not really for performance, that's just your own well-being. Yeah. Alright, great. So I was gonna say my, my two cents would have been, well, we might get more bang for buck out of doing more like anaerobic conditioning, so more interval training, you know, sprinting. Yeah. Um making the short so making the intervals much shorter, not having to run so long distance, but your well-being is also hugely, and mental, mental game is hugely important. Yeah, but I didn't have a, as I said before, I was just training for life. But okay. now, now I have a goal in place, yeah, yeah. I need to alter my training yeah. to fit that So goal. you don't mind if we change that? No. Oh, so I will have four programs for her. I hear now she's lifting six times a week. I might tell her to drop down one and have one rest day. <laughs> because recovery is super important. Like your body like it's body weight stuff so it's not going to be as taxing on your nervous system like we're not doing a lot of barbell work which is a bit another reason barbell work and a lot of dumbbell work external resistance will tax the nervous system quite heavily especially if it's all of a sudden and it's just sudden at sudden high load body weight you can do high low generally and you often don't have dogs you don't often get muscle soreness too much and if you do you recover pretty quickly generally I feel like I've got some epic pump going on after those push-ups. You're looking huge. <laughs> I always don't recognize that. The reason I always like doing isometric holds is long eccentrics on push-ups and pull-ups is because 
people exhaust the muscle concentrically, like as it shortens, people often exhaust that before they exhaust their eccentric strength. And eccentrically, the muscle is actually stronger. So to get more out of you, I'm gonna add an isometric hold or a long um, lowering down to cause more muscle damage, more time under tension, more strength, like greater, greater, uh, greater gains, greater, greater physiological adaptations. Of the week, okay, lower rep speed. Okay, so that's really important. I don't want you gaining excess muscle mass unnecessarily. Um, you need that power to weight ratio. Exactly. Because I find if I'm too is lighter than I am now, my strength and my chin ups just go, go up. Like I can smash them out, but at the moment, I, I, I'm still lean, but I, I'm, I'm, it, it's easier for me if I'm two kilos lighter than I, than I am now. That's why I've altered my diet, so when, when I can be, then it'll be so much easier. Right. Well, the Bulgarian split, split squat is one of the best single leg movements for power, and strength, Sprint, sprinting speed, jump height, one of the best. So where, as the weeks go on, as we will progress and do iso holds in the bottom in this position, we'll do long eccentrics, and even do add in kind of an explosive jump into this as well. But just to start with, I don't think these have ever been used in Woodford's history. Do I know why we have them? No, I don't. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna experiment. This is all experimentation. You know, we're dealing with a very, very unique set of circumstances. Okay. We get into a plank position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull on this and you have to stay stable. So I'm just gonna pull lightly to start with. That should just be enough to pull you off balance. So you can stabilize the chaotic pressure. Scale of one to ten. <laughs> Alright, so why, why did we do that? Most people wouldn't have seen that before. I got that from Jody Franco. Um, he used that on one of his MMA athletes. So, for her, <sighs> preparing her body to be under random chaotic conditions is super important. And her core, the thing that's responsible for stabilizing her entire body, or her spine especially, and protecting her spine, um, is one of the main priorities. So if we can develop a, how do I say? We well, obviously got to develop a high degree of strength, but using different, more advanced modalities like this, then I think we can better prepare her for the competition that is to arrive in the future. Not only is grip strength super important, but how do I say, finger strength, right? Which is a, a, a a part of grip strength. So her ability to hold weight and hold her body weight with just her fingers. Because she'll be in situations where she not gonna, you might not have an option. What, what are you gonna grip onto? Or how are you gonna grip? Yeah. So pinch grip. First we'll start with five kilos. My left hand is so much weaker. My left hand, yeah. Done, first session yes. in the books. It's a long one, but... It's gonna be a journey. It is. It's gonna be a journey. I mean, next like seven weeks. We just got seven weeks to go. It's like, just go harder. It's game on though. Every sec every session has right. to count. Right. Every single session. And so there's no mucking around. You gotta think as well. Like, say you do six hours worth of sessions a week. There's still 120 something hours, whatever. You know this. So mastering your sleep. You talk about nutrition. Like, we talk about building an efficient, healthy athlete. What they do outside of here is super, super important, extremely important. The supplementation if you need it, you know? But we'll work on that every week, every day. Every, every day. day. Done. <laughs> Over now.